All right, let's talk about S and Q mode on the A7 R Mark III and the A7 III. I mean, I like it on the FS7. It uh, is really easy to switch from 4K 24, 25p to 4K 60 and stuff like that, and it works really nice. And this camera, I'm not quite sure if it's a good idea to use it because of the settings. Let's dive into it. So if you go into the menu, uh, it's on the second page. You can set your frame rate for SNQ. So here we go. I chose 100 frames per second. You can choose any other frames per second here. But um, since I'm in Parland, 100 is the maximum. Uh, 120 would be all kinds of flickery anyways. And it's not available in PAL mode. So uh, the issue that I have, it generates a movie for you. Um, it generates a 25p movie in my case in PAL and uh, it's slowed down and it only has 16 megabits per second which is a bit odd because when I choose maybe go ahead here and go ahead and choose 100 here it has 100 so this is 16 versus 100 megabytes per second and it generates the movie for you when you choose uh, to shoot 100 frames per second or 100p or 120p directly um, it kind of uh, shoots 100 frames per second and you have sound and you can choose your slow motion in post-production which could be the better choice if you need a quick one maybe you go with the snq but uh, not quite sure so a lot of people say well um, i need this slow motion quick well, yes, you can go ahead and move the dial to SNQ and stuff like that, but sometimes you can't really see it and then you moved it in the wrong direction and stuff like that. So what I do is when I'm switching between 4K and 1080p, um, I go ahead and uh, set it up to my favorites page. So I'm always in my favorites anyways, and I set it up to the first page anyways. And what the trick here is to have uh, this pre-selected. So I go ahead HD and it's pre-selected. So whatever I do, I just switch between 4K. I'm shooting 4K. Now I go into my menu and it kind of remembers where uh, you did set the last setting. And I just switch to HD and bam, it is on 100p and I can shoot Slow motion now and then I go back, go to menu, just switch to 4K and I'm back in my 4K settings. And, and that, that way, way I have um, better quality I have better for my slow quality motion and also I have sound ADP. and I can do a little bit more post-production with it. So yeah, you can do it with the SQ mode, but yeah, not quite sure. I mean, this is also quite fast and especially when I do speed ramping, this is the better option, I think. Let's switch to Final Cut 10 and let's see what the footage looks like and what is maybe the better version for post-production. All right, here we are on Final Cut 10 and I have two kinds of clips here. One is shot with 100 frames per second, 100p directly, and the other one is the S and Q setting. And I did this several times because of uh, sun and lights and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you can see the 100p setting is with sound and the other one is without. So this is the generated clip inside of the camera. And when we look to QuickTime, um, this is the 25p setting or clip inside or from the camera and it's 16 megabits per second and then we have the other one is 100 fps and it's actually around 100 and if you look closely i mean uh not quite sure i mean you don't see much difference the one here is a little bit darker because the sun changed uh, some clouds came in and I mean, at first glance, you don't really see 
any big difference in terms of um, quality. This is playing back smooth and this is fine as well. Um, so in terms of quality, maybe you have a little bit more shadows here, shadow details. If you push it really hard, uh, you might see a little bit more. Uh, but then again, I think it's not too bad. So in terms of post-production, you might have a little bit more detail and quality and less artifacting when you push the, the footage really hard. But other than that, it's all right. But uh, what I really like in the 100 frames per second clip is you have sound. So especially if you need that, it's nice to have. And then again, like I work, I set the automatic speed. You can set this here, right? So this is the custom, you have all kinds of stuff, but you also have the automatic speed. And I set this to shortcut and bam, now it's slow motion again as well. Um, let me turn off the effects because the codex is a nice color plugin, but it's really GPU intensive. And you even get a little bit of slow motion sound. Or what I do is sometimes I really like to use speed ramping and uh, this is a bit easier the way I work. Uh, I just speed ramp here and maybe here and then I go ahead and also could hit automatic speed for this section and now it's slow motion, you know, and it goes back to normal here. And this is nice. And then you have to do this here. You have to set it to um, speed up and then go ahead and hit the bam, bam, and then I go ahead and uh, normal, right? So. And I think uh, in this case, the slow motion and the up, uh, the speed change, uh, yeah, in terms of shutter speed and stuff like that, that, that will mess up this here a little bit more, I think. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, but anyways, both are okay, but I think you have more options and a little bit better quality in terms of color information and the frames itself that are natively so to speak in this case so i would say better shoot 100 fps directly and not let the camera generate a movie for you in terms of details not quite sure depending on the settings and the setup and the color and the exposure and whatever all right there you have it this is my solution and my recommendation if you want to shoot slow motion with the a7 r mark iii and the a7 iii i think it's the better quality and it's more flexible in terms of post-production if you ask me at least for my style and my taste Anyways, if you have any questions about the A7 R Mark III, Final Cut 10 or whatsoever, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers. Boop, boop, boop.